Okay, question 11. Um, it's a ratio question. So, important information to start with uh, Kerry's take home pay was £15,000. So, £15,000 there. Um, she spent 40% of her take home pay on rent. So, uh, she used the rest and then on, on a ratio of, of uh, living expenses, clothes, and entertainment. So, the rest. So, first thing we need to do is work out what rent she paid. Well, 10% divide it by 10, that's 1,500. Then uh, quadruple it or times it by 4, that'll then give you 6,000 pounds. So, if we take the 6,000 pounds then off the 15,000 pounds, that then leaves us with 9,000 pounds. Now, that's going to mean going on in a 3 to 1 to 2 ratio uh, to living expenses. Um, clothes and then entertainment. So the steps of the ratio question is we add the ratio up um, it, as long as we're given the total, in this case we are. So we're given £9,000 to share as a total. So we add them up and get six. So we then divide, this is how many parts we've got, six parts into the 9,000. Six into nine goes one, three remainder. Six into 30 goes five, and then we've got zero and zero. 6 into 0 as go the following. Um, now we're wanting how much entertainment, how much spend entertainment here. Well, one part is worth 1,500. Two parts then, we'll just times it by 2. That'll then give us £3,000. So £3,000 is what we're after on 11. Question 12. Um, Got quite a bit of algebra really on this question, so we first of all 12a looking to expand um, 3 open bracket 4x plus y. Now I use what I call the claw, um, different people have different methods. So we're sort of grabbing both bits, so it's 3 times 4, which is 12, and then we put the x on, and then 3 times is like a 1 there, so 3 times 1 is 3, and it's y, and there's a plus here, so it's a positive value. Um, part B, uh, expand the following, 5P, P minus 3. So we've got, again, the claw method, use that times that, and then that times that. 5P, 5P times P, well P times P is P squared, and then the 5 comes on this side. And then we've got 5P times minus 3. Well, 5 times minus 3 is minus 15, and there's a P on the outside of that here. C, expand and simplify. So this is what I call the uh, the double claw, if you like. Um, some people have the smiley face method, different methods for it. So we're times in that by that, and that by that, and then this by this, and also this by this. So we've got y times y, which is y squared, y times minus 3, which is minus 3y, plus 8 times y, which is plus 8y, and plus 8 times minus 3, overall be a minus, and that's 24. That'll then give you y squared, and you put your y's together. I'm at minus 3, I'm adding 8. That'll give me a positive 5y. Take away 24. And finally, d. Um, 2t minus 3 all squared. The biggest area is to write on 4t squared plus 9 because you're just squaring your bits. Uh, what it's squared bracket means that we square um, the bracket. It's, it's the bracket squared, so it means bracket times bracket. So we have the same uh, part here again. So we've got this times this and this times this and then that times that and that times that. So 2t times 2t is 4t squared. 2t take times minus 3. Well, t, uh, 2 times 3 is minus 6t. Minus 3 times 2t, minus 6t again. And then minus 3 times minus 3. 2 minus is given us a plus, and it's 9. That will then collect together to give us 4t squared. Minus 6, take another 6, is minus 12t. And then plus 9 at the end. Question 13. 
make m the subject of this formula. So it's basically saying make m the equal to bit. So make it m equals. So we've got p equals h plus 6m. So we want to make m on its own. So if I take the h over first of all. And then I'm going to get 6 times m. So to get rid of the times we'll divide by 6. So it's p take h and then divide by 6. And that's m. So m is equal to p minus h all divided by 6. Now question 14, unfortunately, I don't have um, a sort of tool to you, show you the circum uh, a compass construction. So you have to bear with me partially unless I'm afraid. Um, so it won't be a great example of how to do this. I'll give you the rough idea, uh, but you you really want to do this by yourself and then check with your teacher. Um, so once at least two meters away from the wall AB, so AB is here. So you take your ruler, make sure it's per perfectly vertical, and then from the note, making sure note fits perfectly there. Mine's just slightly off, but it's it's near as it will be there. Then we mark on here two centimeters away. So just mark a few points on there, and then we can remove uh, the rule for a second. Um, I'm going to show you obviously how to use the next parts as well. We then um, are going to draw a line, so our line's going all the way across through the points. So it can't be anywhere closer to that, so it's all this area at the moment that's, that's available. You're also told that it's more than three meters away from the T, which is the tree. So what you do is you take a compass and you would put your point here and then expand and expand the compass to three. In effect, what that will do, um, I'll just show you roughly what we're looking at here. I'll do this in red. Is it would draw a circle that had a radius of three. And obviously, I'm just doing this with a ruler very roughly. You'll be able to use a compass and just get this construction um, perfectly right straight away. But these are just guidelines for me to uh, when I draw this. Now, again, this is going to be freehand, so it will not be that great. So you'd be looking at something that would just touch this here and then curve around there. So you'd be drawing something like that. And it's got to be greater, so it's going to be away more distance from that area and then it's closer to hedge dc this side here is closer to that than um c b what we would then do is, is use our compass again would keep a certain distance doesn't matter what distance but just say i pick this roughly it's going to be about there i draw an arc on that making sure it's the same distance here and arc there what will then happen is that you will then put your points on here and draw an arc into the center an arc in here and to the center and then you will draw a straight line from C through that cross. What that will then give you um, is a set of uh, an acceptable area that this tree can be in. Um, so it's closer to the hedge along DC than it is along CB and it's more than three meters away so we're looking at this area in there. Then we've got question 15. Question 15, we're given a, um, a trapezium here, and in the diagram, all the measurements are in centimetres. We know the perimeter of this shape, so P is 38. So we've got P is 38, then the perimeter we work out by adding all these sides together. So if I add 2x to 3x plus 1, 2x minus 1, and then to 3x minus 2. That will equal 38. So adding my x's together, 2x, that's 5x, 7x, 10x, so I get 10x. 1, take away 1 is 0, take away 2 is minus 2. That gives me 38. I add 2 to this side, so I get 10x equals 40. So x then is 4. What I then do at that point, and it's asking us for the area of the trapezium, is cross off what the expressions are and put um, 4 in as x. So 2 times 4 is 8, take away 1 is 7. 
3 times 4 is 12, plus 1 is 13. And 3 times 4 is 12, take away 2 is 10. So I've got all these here, and I want the area. Now you can use the area formula at the front for a trapezium, it's on the formula sheet. Um, most students I speak to generally prefer to split a trapezium up into two shapes or even three if it's uh, obviously a trapezium that's got uh, another sort of triangular side on this side. Um, and then they just draw out and say, right, well that's 7 by 8. So the rectangle there, 8 times 7 gives me 56 centimetres squared. And then we've also got a triangle here, which is 8 high. The height of 8, the base of it, well if that's 7 and that's 13 all the way across, that's got to be 6 in there, because 7 take 13 gives you 6. So we've then got 8 times 6, half it, because we're looking for the triangle area, not a rectangle area. So that's 48 half, giving you 24 centimetres squared. We add the two together, giving you 80 centimetres squared.